I'm gonna probably do one of these as a test model again and then we can see what the others will is definitely going to be here that would here bronze oh, really? Okay. I think it's actually more the brass I want to be worried about. There isn't much. And what's been done to me have been primed black, dry brush silver. Hey Jim, how you doing buddy? Um, and then just red on the cloaks. So I'm gonna just add a bit of detail to each other. I'm not gonna go crazy because again I'm going for a tabletop look. Not to Etching on things like the weapon. Hey, you, Jim, you good? Thanks as always, bye, buddy, for coming in and staying alive. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to use this bronze just to touch up a bunch of areas. a bit like yeah it, it is a bit like a rifle from a tuscan raider yes <laughs> definitely has that look and vibe to it
Who knows? These could be Tuscan Raiders. I mean, under all this machinery. Who knows? They've been enslaved. 40k universe. Much of a James Bond fan, Jim? If so, I've got some bragging rights, but if not, then it probably doesn't matter to you. <laughs> well, last night we got, uh, we won a competition. We went and saw it uh, the world premiere. Early access to see the new Bond movie. Very good. Oh, James. Oh, James. That's, yeah, I suppose you would like that, Bill. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Premier Elite. Red carpet. An exclusive... Uh, World Premiere Merch. Well, I don't want to do too much this. I think they look quite cool as a lot of the silver. Yeah, it's quite funny. We had to put our put our mobile phones into like these box seal bags. We didn't film any footage or anything. It's all very uh, very secure, and you know, you're being watched by people. That there had to be people at the front of the screen watching. Um, everyone watching it. It was a it was a yeah, it was a cool experience. Will obviously remain spoiler free. But as James Bond movies go, it's pretty good. Certainly better than the, the last two. First one, you know, kind of, the last two have kind of been a bit all over the place. But the Inner Royale sort of. Oh, okay. I'm not. I I was not aware of that, Jim. I will. I will check that out. Thanks, man.
Ah, cool. Yeah, you know, I'm, I, I'm also a big fan of the classic. I think uh, Roger Moore, Sean Connery. Think I'd have to go more Sean Connery than Roger. No, sorry, more Roger Moore. Or a lot more Roger Moore Bond. Than I. I'd have to. I had to stake her. If I had to put a stake in the ground for my favourite Bond. Probably have to be Roger Moore. Yeah, uh, Quantum Solace is missable. Um, Skyfall's alright. Hey, Mort. Talking about my rise to stardom and going to the uh, James Bond world premiere. I think I'm officially an A-lister now, I think. Yeah, yeah, it was very cool, man. <laughs> yeah, it was a really good night. Yeah, we we de we genuinely won tickets to go all the way to the Albert Hall and see it there, um, but it just was too hard to uh, to get there. So they did like also um, live link places. So we went to a quite a really it was a really nice cinema where we live. Like, the seats were amazing. I've never sat in seats like it. Like. Lazy Boy style chairs with like recliners by or electric, more electric and you know we got free air uh, so um because the, to go to to go to the Albert Hall you get to be there with like two in the it was a black tie event so you couldn't go if you weren't going to wear a black tie um you had to be there at two o'clock in the afternoon uh, and it went on till like eleven o'clock at night so um obviously everyone saw the movie at the same time so everyone sat down at eight o'clock and the movie went on. So, but we had well, with the kids and stuff we just couldn't make that work so we decided to go with the local option but it was really nice because when you sat in this when you when you all sat down they've done a live link to out to um the albert hall and you know a live call with um daniel craig and then the producer director and all that sort of stuff and some of the stars so it was still it's still quite nice and you all got um gift memorabilia and all this sort of stuff so it was done really well Still felt very special. Certainly the best I've ever been treated as a nice film. <laughs> I need like some little colours and stuff for buttons and I'll just take a bit of blue somewhere. Where have I got a blue? Okay.
Ya lo hago es mi ya. Yeah, if you get a chance, definitely worth a watch. I thought it was um, pretty good. I like James Bond movies. Quite tough to go. Obviously, it's Daniel Craig. No spoilers, it's well known. Last James Bond. Uh, at least. Well, if it happens, we're going to get a new James Bond, or at least a new 007. Hey, James. Now, I don't know who's going to take up the mantle next. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I won't, I won't spoil. Anything. I definitely won't spoil anything. Um, like I say, it's, it's definitely, it's definitely worth a, definitely worth a watch. And it's definitely worth a, you know, I know it's cinemas and stuff at the moment are a bit um, sort of you know, controversial whether going back to those things. But you know, at the cinema last night they they had social distancing in place, so seats in between us were sort of empty and things like that. So. It felt as good as it's going to get at the moment. How you doing, James? You okay? Yes, I was. Uh, we won tickets to go and see the world premiere last night of the uh, new Bond movie. We're very, very lucky. It was uh, good. Thumb, thumbs up. Definitely a thumbs up. <laughs> really, Jim? Is that really weird, is it, Jim? <laughs> yeah? Or does the algorithm know you too well? <laughs> Hear that? Uh, there you go, was that nice for you? <laughs> I might even do some work if you that work? Oh, that works. <laughs> I would like in red. When you start <laughs> You know I'll do anything for the views, Jim. As it is, we've lost a viewer. We lost a follower, man. I went to 339 again. 340 seems to be my curse. Get to 340 and someone drops off. I reckon someone's just playing with me. <laughs> yeah, it does. It does happen, uh, James. Yes, we just so last week we finished a kill team for um, Thousand Suns and Grey Knights. Uh, yeah, it, we, it would be someone like Pundance, so Yeah, absolutely. Um, so this week I've been having. I've had these sat in the drawer for so long. I figured, sod it. I'm going to get them to a tabletop level and not worry about. It. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was like 
I go up and I come down again. Sounds personal. Yeah, honestly, I think I'm going to just leave this guy like this and face him and then chuck some pigment powders on him. I don't know how to make you work. Basically, I need to I need to actually produce videos and not just take uploads from Twitch and stick them on YouTube. No one cares. Not that I want. Not like I, I genuinely don't care. I don't mind. I need to. I fun anyway. But I don't know how to make. I think he had one of these on his shoulder, didn't he? I did end up I did end up crumbling um, me and James played kill team the weekend obviously we're playing the old version of kill team but at the end of that game we were like oh damn we probably need to go and buy the new kill team don't we so the new the new kill team is kind of wasn't what I wanted you know, I wanted to sort of shy away from buying another box but Why did I get this blackout? Blackout because I was going to just try to. Yes, yeah, so I think the new kill team will come tomorrow. His orcs and like space Nazis. I can't think what the, what the other what the other team in it is. Apart from they look like space Nazis. I'm pretty sure it's I'm pretty sure it's Space Nazis. Probably have a proper name, but Yeah, Orcs and I mean they do have a proper name. I'm pretty sure DW didn't call them Space Nazis. That's what they look <laughs> What's there? there is a movie, isn't there? there is a movie about uh, space Nazis, I think. Didn't they like uh, have a secret moon base or something? Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there is a there is a movie out. Like one of these kind of ridiculous, crazy movies where 
someone ends up you know, getting this riding a dinosaur. One of, one of those kind of movies. Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> that's it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it, Iron Skies, that's, that's the one. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know, I think a sequel has just recently come out. I'm sure I saw a sequel, or maybe if it wasn't a sequel, it was a third one. Pretty sure there's something else has come out in that series. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It is Sarah Payne. They, they, they turn out to be, um, well, I don't know. That, I don't know if they always were, but aren't they just? They're just aliens, aren't they? I think it was the second one that I saw bits of, and I think at one point, um, uh, Hitler's brother, who's also obviously an alien, and. Or something, and he comes through building, and he's riding a uh, T-Rex, I think. <laughs> it's all sellers now. Yeah, but what kind of sports gym? Is it recommending you the uh, lingerie NFL? That, that's the thing, isn't it? What's that, what's that called? The ladies, the ladies NFL, and they're playing in basically bikinis. Uh, it's just it's it XFL or something like that. I can't remember. Another brought <laughs> one out. <laughs> no, it wasn't. No, there is. I, you can go. I think it's pretty legitimate, um, and it's a proper thing. Um, and they're not wearing lingerie. They're wearing um, like swimming outfit and then they've got the shoulder pads on and the helmets i've seen pictures of it and i'm pretty sure i've seen some video clips of it on other web on on sort of you know stuff you search around the internet for and um but i think it's like a legit thing it might be called the xfl maybe that's what it's called but it's like on i think it's on i don't think it's like a, a hidden thing like a you no know, bad thing Oh yes, it was. Yeah, that's it. XFL, XFL came from uh, WWF or WWE. Triple X. <laughs> Might even just be the women's football league. I don't know. But they are not wearing much compared to what the men are wearing. They're wearing the protective gear, and they are playing proper American football, but they are doing it in not much. There you go. Hey, Tuffy. Hey, you, Tuffy. Where are you? Uh, how many miniatures you painted today? You know what? I'm thinking. I'm thinking this guy's just done. I just don't. I'm, I don't know what else I want to do to him. I've got to, I've got to paint ten of these things. <laughs> I don't think I'm trying that hard, Jim. <laughs> anyway, I never said you're old. <laughs> oh no. 
Oh, that sucks, Tuffy. I'm glad it's not the uh, any of the C's, because there's actually a worse C word. Well, there's a really bad C word. There's a there's too many bad C words, basically. But uh, I'm glad none of you have none of those C. Um, just have hopefully horrible cold. Wonderful ex-president uh, called it not kung flu. Imagine those words actually came out of one of the most powerfulest men on the planet. Yeah, that's that's where his his level was. Those words actually came out of his mouth. That sucks, Jim. Toothache is the absolute worst. Right. Um, do you want to take a bit of basing? Yeah, toothache. Toothache sucks. Nip into the garage, grab your pliers. A bit Rambo style. Bottle of scotch. <laughs> Maybe that's what you should do, Jim. You should go to the, the, the roughest bar in town, fill someone's pint, and, uh, and, and see if what happens. You might get a free bit of dental work. Because I assume old US of A, I'm sure going to the dentist is a very expensive I mean it's quite expensive in the UK but we're still uh, covered by quite a lot of the NHS for dental work God knows what it costs to go to the dentist in America exactly yeah <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. You go to the you go to the pub, knock someone's pint over, thinking, "Go on, mate, hit me, hit me there, and knock me tooth out." What he actually does is glass you in the face. <laughs> uh, not yeah, so you end up having to have twenty stitches rather than uh, getting your tooth knocked out. Yeah, in the, in the UK that wouldn't work, would it? Yeah, that would be pretty good. To get a molar out. Oh, well, I hope it gets sorted, buddy. Like I say, there's nothing worth. I've had an exposed um, nerve before, uh, and my gosh, the pain of that. I ended up, I'm just, I ended up sticking, like, um, I moulded some bread up into, like, a, like, a paste and 
stuck it inside my tooth to just cover the hole because I'd never been in pain like it. Nothing would touch it. I was in, it's so much pain you literally can't think straight. Um, it seems to go straight to your brain and uh, yeah. I didn't sleep at all and had to go in there the next day and did bits and pieces to it to sort of get it going and then I had to have a full on root canal like straight away. It was awful. I've seen now, what I could have done is I've seen you can actually buy things like temporary fillings online. It's just like a gunky bunch of stuff and you sort of squirt it into the tooth and it will go hard and then hopefully hold for a few days. But whoo, yeah, that was not fun. And even then a root canal is not fun. <laughs> Look at a primary school has that for pain. Yeah, that's also that's also pretty tough. Especially at the moment, Tuffy. Hats off, yeah. Yeah, you know what? I think for a simple tabletop model, I think that'll do. I'll let that dry. Um, come back to it. Finish it off as it. Yeah, you gotta be a machine. Tuffy is, uh, I think I paint fast, but Tuffy is clever. Yeah, yes, I forgot, yes. Your, those, um, those Nurgle toads were, were really cool. I love the uh, the um, wet look, what do you want to call it, the slobber. Really cool. Yeah, that's it now, you're on a roll.
Nice. There you go. Look, we're all winning. <laughs> This is this is it. You're gonna join if you're gonna be here. Brother of uh, yeah, golden button winners. Maybe that's the. If I ever do get a second emote, maybe maybe it needs to be a golden button. Exclusive use by golden button winners. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it, Jim? I've never won one for stuff that I thought I might win one. Like, I'll do a really cool, like, project, and I'll be like, oh, I might win a golden button for that. Uh, and then, and then I don't. <laughs> Although, I, you know, I've, I've, def I've won a few over there. Maybe. But it's funny, it's never, it's never for what you think you might do. Oh, actually, that was, you know, that turned out really nice. I really like it, you know. Um a lot of time and effort into it years ago i won one for um war machine models i painted i actually really didn't like them I wasn't i wasn't happy with them at all that's kind of cool but then i'd done something else about the same time that i was really happy with and that didn't even get like a looking so just seems to be uh Luck of the luck of the Whatever they seem to be looking at that way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I did get one for my um my um fantasy brawl. Um that and that was good. Like when I when I won the uh, the hobby god uh, thing, that was for um, painted up the entire um, bell box. You know, Games Workshop released a uh, they called. Anyway, it's a box full of like spells you can put on your table. Uh, painted them all up on a stream in a weekend and uh, on a golden button for that. But again, paint job wise, I mean, they're, they're all right. They're, they're, they look cool. There's some cool effects in there. It wasn't like one of my, but I'd look back and go, oh yeah, that's one of my best paint jobs. Best project. Nice to get. Let's face it, if it was done purely on skill, uh, Irish Steve or Genuine Vision would win every single week because <laughs> pumps out stuff every week that is next level shit. Me and mortals wouldn't even get a look. Yeah, there is. Yeah, I mean, I guess, um, and that's unofficial. I guess that is what uh, Sundance and Jerry do on the Tuesday, right? They kind of go through it.
I never pick my stuff to go through, but I think that's because they hate me. Hey, McGough Mog. How you doing, buddy? gangs here tonight, it's really nice. Thanks very much. Cool. <laughs> that would be hilarious, Jim, if that was just you self-promoting. <laughs> yeah, I think this project deserves more luck. Oh, it's one of yours, Jim. <laughs> that would have been, that'd have been an amazing moment. Uh, oh, yeah, this is. I remember seeing this. This is quite an old project now, isn't it? I think there's, a, there's a, quite a lot in this, isn't there? I mean, this is the thing that I couldn't do, and this is why these projects do deserve highlighting. The amount of research people do into it. Like I'd, buy a model, I'd buy a model kit and just paint it. Like people actually go out and do a lot of, lot of time and effort going into it. It is not dead. 
just gone into hiding to do miniature paint. There with Elvis and Michael Jackson. This is a scroll. <laughs> <Just thanks. laughs> oh, yes, you played the game with Bruce and Mark, didn't you? Yes. What's that? I'll have that on tomorrow whilst I'm uh, working. Now there's some self-promotion, absolutely. If you're not subscribed, go and subscribe to the Hit Red Podcast. <laughs> Hit like and subscribe. While you're at it, go to the Hobby Lodge on YouTube, hit like and subscribe. <laughs> Press all of the buttons. You can absolutely ding my dong, please. I'll take any 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 donging I can get, and in fact, dinging. <laughs> That's cool, man. At least someone listens to them. I was trying. I was trying to leave you Easter eggs in there. Uh, these little comments just for you. Woke <laughs> you up in the afternoon, or in the morning even. I oh, sorry, afternoon. Yeah, sorry, afternoon. Keep you, keep you, yeah, keep you busy in the afternoon. Uh, that's the, uh, I liked it. He thought it was a cat. I was like, "Oh no, man, that's my dog." Oh, that's small. Well, she's a miniature snail, though. Oh, but... Okay, yeah, that's true. Yeah, to, to you, she was tiny. Yeah. <laughs> it was ever Father Ted moment then. These are very small. Those very far away.
Yeah. A small and far right, yeah. He was posting on Facebook today to get some advice on um I mean it sounds like he's getting things up and running, but uh yeah. Trying to get network sorted and from the best advice I could and yeah. but to urge on the side of keep bogged down I mean the fact that you're going into you know I don't know if I need a layer 2 switch or a layer 3 probably overthink getting very excited about power over ethernet and I'm like yep cool thing but don't assume everything you buy is going to be POE enabled maybe forking out a lot of money for converters and stuff yeah exactly yeah Yeah, I mean, Jim, I think we all knew that um, after this, well, I, I said to him, you know, I, I, I don't know anyone having had this experience, anyone who has sold a business, uh, who then, which is their, their creation, their whole, you know, sort of thing, sold it on and then stuck around. Extremely painful to do it uh, because ultimately you are not the person defining the destiny of that business anymore um and to you know i just don't know anyone that's done it and and even from my own experience when when we told things it was like right you know cash out go and do so and i think that's probably a big part of it now i think he'll stick around and do some consultancy for the for them and didn't they wheel him out at events and stuff like that uh, how much day to day he'll be involved you know it's like a lot of founder owner type people you know they stop being the CEO essentially and they become a founder owner uh, well exactly he's not even an owner now he's just a founder um, and therefore less and less involved Which is natural, I think that's, you know... Uh... I think he'll come back and do the... Ra I think he will do the ra things like the radio show and stuff. Because I think that's genuinely something, even if he wasn't... Um piece of war on tabletop associated anymore let's say he completely dropped off I could see him doing it under his own brand right so I think he's big enough face in the community a bit like Duncan Rhodes and other people like that where they've managed to then build something off of their own name essentially you know um I think he's well known throughout the industry and could have enough clout to do something on his own and things like that radio show and podcasting and um, you know being pulled out to events and stuff like that but yeah the day-to-day -day running of on tabletop I don't see it Yeah, I don't know, obviously, um, yeah, how much Jerry wants to be the, the front man, I don't know, but I think in the absence of anybody else, no one else is taking up that mantle, right, so I think it, it does require a front man, or front person, 
uh, you know, I don't think it's Justin, I don't think it's uh, John. They're great at what they do. Um, I think in the absence of all of that, it's scary, right? Yeah. Yeah, it definitely. I, I, that's what. I, whether it was intended to be like that or not, I think that's the falling into. I know he, he mentioned to me once that because I said when, when one of the first times he did the show on his own and he did the intro, I messaged him said, "Oh, buddy, that was really good. You done a, a really good intro. You know, you you, felt, you look confident." Um, looks like you're comfortable he was like wasn't the plan i never in i was never meant to be doing this but no one else is doing it <laughs> that's why he does the uh all our cogs and you know, all the weekend starts now stuff and i don't think anyone else wanted to do that so uh let's do it really. yeah i don't watch i don't watch the shows um I literally will skip through it. Um, I haven't watched an end to end, or I'll have it on in the background. Like I'll put it on the big TV behind me um, whilst I'm work. So I listen to I listen to it more really than watch it. Um, but I don't know. For me, it's lost a bit of just the calm of it. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe that's just because I'm now one of the old, like, I always thought I was one of the new people, but I wouldn't consider myself to be anything just than just a, like, but I feel like maybe now I'm more thinking of the old days and I oh, wasn't it good back when. I mean, I, I'm a big fan of the show in the, in the actual studio works much better yeah or you know the, the zoom call the skype call the only thing i could probably equate it to is um like top gear it's probably a terrible association because i'm not trying to say they were like top gear just saying one of the reasons i watched top gear was for the camaraderie between those three presenters and they had a natural way of being like it didn't feel rehearsed or forced or anything like that and i think um you know that they had that and i think warren was a big part of that i think he was the lich linchpin between all of it and um all that i don't I don't get it with the new guys you know? That doesn't don't think it's helped because it's actually really hard to do rapport and natural back and forth on a video call. There's always a delay, or you might mishear somebody, or you don't know when you can interject or interrupt. Where when you're in a room, conversation just flows more naturally, uh, and you can read off each other whether things are going well or not. Um, see if someone's struggling for a thought, and you can jump in and add your view. Uh, doing that over a video call is incredibly hard. Incredibly, incredibly. One of the things that I'm sort of advising businesses, you know, that's what I do for my job, is I advise businesses around technology, culture and behaviour. And it's one of the things that we've lost in this new way of working is that sort of incidental moments that happen over the coffee making, pitching and bumping into someone in the corridor a lot of innovation and idea come from just just incidental meetings not when you've booked a meeting with somebody it's normally very transactional you're just doing something because you've got the time slot where when you're out and about that's when naturally becomes other things and i think that's the same with this with this the xlbs you come together we have an agenda boom 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 we threw the agenda great see you later everybody see you tomorrow and then the next show is we have an agenda boom 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 and what used to happen is warren would be given an agenda and very rarely was it ever stuck to they go off piste um you know there were some backstage shows that went on for like you know 
two and a bit hours, right? Because they go off on tangents left, right, and center. You know, you cut out to the studio for Warren meets Matt, or you cut over to an interview, or you cut over to a um, you know close cam to look at some stuff they were showing off. It was lots of jumping about, and uh, that had a flow to it rather than here's four boxes. Look at those for the next hour and a bit. Yeah, I've, I've, I, I have also featured in the weekend. I mean, I really enjoyed it. I uh, I spent the weekend with the guys. Not the weekend. I spent a week with them. When I went on to I went on to gardening leave with my last job. I had three months of gardening leave. It was amazing. This was twenty nine. No, twenty eighteen. I think it was. Oh, uh, 2019. It was for the. Which one was the last one we did? No, it was 2019 because it was for the Flames of War boot camp because I was in, I spent up spending a few days cutting sticks, and uh, I got to do the front stage and backstage show with them, and it was it was really fun. Um, but again, we sat around the table, and. So, and you know this, Jim, there was no rehearsing, there was no, it was like, hey, we've got an agenda here and we'll see how we go. Okay, cool. And we generally did go here, there and everywhere. It was the backstage where um, we were talking about magic in tabletop games, it doesn't feel very magical. I do hope that comes back because, uh, yeah, but also, I've never been part of a community online. You know, there are communities I've been involved in, but never heavily. I feel like with Beast of War, I was more than just a member. I felt like I was actually quite involved with it. Yeah. But I couldn't say that anymore. I don't feel that anymore. I don't really use the website. I occasionally use the products. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. You should know better. Come on. But yeah, I hope it does. I hope it does come back. Um, to, you know, winning formulas and stuff because. I'd like there to be boot camps again, and I'd like there to be a reason to watch them and in that. Not there yet for me, um, hopefully. Yeah, if you, I, it's not it's hard for everybody. It's, not an easy thing to do, but they were definitely. I've been to three boot camps. I've been to the. I've got pictures of them on my wall, which is why I'm looking up here. Um, so I've been to the Volsung boot camp, uh, the Bolt Action boot camp, the Desert one, um, and uh, Flames of War. And they are genuinely the highlights of my hobby time. So my, my hobby, you know. I <laughs> commend you people with what we Yeah, it is nice, and that is nice. Um, yeah. And it's really weird, because sometimes I meet people and then find out who they are. So, Dan, you envision an absolute amazing painter. You all know him. He's Irish Steve on the website. 
and I met him and his wife at a boot camp. And it's then when I came home, I then looked him up on Twitch and was like, holy shit, this guy is not only like Twitch partnered and got like 7,000 followers and often streams to hundreds of people, uh, you know, but also he's a really cool guy. I kicked his ass at bolt action. So the only thing he killed was my medic. Um, so yeah, it was really nice. That is definitely nice to be able to pop some uh, names to faces and and beat people real. Yeah, the Flames of War one was really cool. I liked it because um, that the one. Yeah, that's the one that me and Warren uh, he replaced his panzers with spaceships <laughs> so we, we went weird world war and it was actually a really fun game uh, and, I, and i won because i was using the tactics of blitzing between the buildings and uh taking him out with rockets from, from above it's actually surprisingly effective and then when we held objective points, we just stayed in cover for the entire time and we were pretty much untouchable. Shooting people in cover is bloody hard, it turns out. Generally, they, they have been, um, without shadow of a doubt, everything I've done in the hobby, boot camp, favourite thing. And I didn't know how I'd get on with it, because to be honest, I am a little bit socially awkward. I don't really do well when I walk into a room. Like, it's a really weird thing, like, you send me into a room with CEOs and CTOs and CIOs and get me to talk about technology, I'll spend the years off those people. But if I walk into a room like with the hobby, because I don't feel that confident about my ability with the hobby or my knowledge of the hobby, like when talking to Jim at, at boot camps and stuff, literally look at you, Jim. You're going to think I'm an idiot. You're going to think I'm an idiot. But I, I feel like so inferior because you guys just know so much about the, the, about the hobby, and I am just a, just a, an amateur. I don't know any of the stuff you guys know. Um, uh, and it, so I thought I'd really struggle with it, but I never have that. Never have I had those feelings. Actually, once I get there, everyone you meet is friendly, super nice, all willing to help, all willing to you know spend time. Oh, what's this? I have to... Oh yeah, of course, yes, I remember this. Yeah, this was awesome. I think I just got shot off the table every second, I think. Oh no, this isn't the one I... I didn't, no, no, this isn't me. I didn't go to this one. This is the first Flames of War boot camp. Yes, I wasn't at this. Because there's two Flames of War boot camps, wasn't there? I was at the um, uh, Normandy Flames of War boot camp. This is the desert one. The desert one I did was bolt action. So this is what 2017 yeah so yes yeah so i didn't go to this one i'll have to watch this one back because i don't i don't have obviously um yeah have any context of that so yeah i need to look i need to watch that yeah games exactly the same exactly the same isn't it weird
I've stood on stage at the Olympia, um, London, talked to thousands of people about you know, Google Cloud technology or, or, or whatever the topic might have been, <laughs> and, and like gone, that's alright, I've got this, it'll be fine, you know, it's alright, that sort of. I think I'm Yeah. Yeah, that was sad. I, I briefly did get to meet him. What was it when which one did I meet him at? Must be yeah, there he is there, yeah. So it was the Bolt Act 2018 I met him. Yeah, it was the Bolt Action, the Bolt Action uh, Western Desert Boot Camp. Um, he's on the group photo up there. Yeah, that was very sad. These are simple, but I'm liking how they're turning out. They look all right when they're um, grouped up on a table. I'm tending not to worry about things recently. I'm trying to you know, just get things painted and played with. I'm trying to paint some level, frankly. Go more with. Does it look nice? Uh, really, <laughs> my only critics are my kids anyway, and they think everything looks great, so. Not really, uh, not really complain. My, my um, eldest son, James, he's uh, just got himself a paper round. Um, first job, he's 14, and he's now doing a paper round. So happy that he's earning his own money. Honestly, couldn't be, couldn't be more proud of himself. And good on him, frankly. Um, so he has already worked out. So paper round pays twenty five pound a week, which I think is a insane amount of money for a paper round, frankly. Um, but hey, so he's already worked out that he's going to be buying a bio titan. Um, in November, so he's taking his 25 quid a week, he's screwing it away, he's not going to spend any money on anything, pocket money, everything, and uh, has asked if he can buy a buyer titan. Uh, we will definitely stream us trying to build a bloody one of those things. That will intimidate me. It's like, holy crap. Not a full time, not a, uh, you know, he's a, he's a tiered player, so 
thankfully Titan is only about 300 pounds, but it's still going to be the most expensive model we've ever bought. Singular model. But I said to him, it's like, well, I probably wouldn't let you spend your pocket money on it because you know, I, even I think a 300 pound model is silly, but frankly, you're earning it, so I don't really have much of a say in what you spend your money on that you've gone out and earned, so uh, yeah. For a bloody great big um, apocalypse sized tyranid. I think it's I think it's 284 pounds or something like that. Yeah, I mean I guess I guess it would. Um, yeah, I mean if you look it up on Forge World, uh, it's a I mean it's huge, it's huge, and I think it's quite a lot of points. I think really you can only use it in um, you know, apocalypse games and stuff like that. Um, and I could never, I mean, I would never be able to justify buying one. But I'm like, dude, if you're gonna, if you're gonna save it up, you're gonna get up every single day at sort of half past six in the morning and goes and does his paper round. Like, well, how to you, buddy? I have said him, once, once he saves it up, I will um, drive him up to We'll do a, a drive up to um, Games Workshop, I think it go to uh, the Forge World place and buy it in person. Um, <laughs> yeah exactly yeah oh well i'm with you dude i'm like you know i did say to him you know for that sort of money even gw money uh 200 you know 300 quid would get you a pretty good uh pretty good armor army but he i mean he has got you know i he has got a nice tyranid army and uh I'll have to get a picture of it. It's very cool. Let me see if I can get it. Uh, so Bio Titan. I forgot to say Forge World, yes. Oh my gosh. Forge World has got a capture. On their website for just even looking at something on the oh well sodgy forge world well, i'll go to images for frick's sake yeah just just google um forge world of being how could you have, how could you even at the home page put a um capture in Please click each image containing a truck. Thank you. Oh. God's sake. No one wants to look at your homepage, Bordwell. Not try and rob you. See if this works. I mean, I understand putting a capture in checkout, something like this, but this was this was for me to go to the homepage, you know. <laughs> yeah, so that's what he wants. That's the model. So yeah, I was right. Two hundred eighty-four quid. And I think if you look at the images, it shows you how big it is compared to, um, uh, yeah, there you go. So it shows you size comparison to a 
fire warrior from Tau, I think. <laughs> you can see it's a big old uh, oracle. Come on, yeah, Crikey. Certainly not someone there who's focused on the consumer experience. Yeah, damn, yeah, exactly. Uh, it's a big boy. I think that I think your project's looking great, mate. Um, whenever I see pictures of them, fantastic. Right, uh, so I'm going to be ending it there for tonight. It's half past nine, and I said I'd head up to the house at half nine. Um, so, but this is what we're getting done. So we're doing tabletop um, kill team. Nothing special. Most of the work was done with the airbrush and dry brushing. Um, and then I'm just doing some little details in the sort of the bronze, just to give them a bit of color here and there. But um, you know, just, just, just little bits really. Um, Cause I'd like to get this done. These are probably gonna be the kill team my son takes to school for bringing new kids into the game. So they can grab a bunch of these and uh, do them up. I have got the boss, I have got the commander. So um, at some point I will paint him up as well. They don't really play command as much in kill team, so um, you really just need the kill team itself, which I think is 10 guys. I can't remember what they are, but there's two types of troop in here, and I think it is um, is the 10. So, yeah, they'll all get to this sort of stage. I'm going to base them up with some desert sand, so it's some um, Martian sort of um, grounding, and then I'm going to splash some of the uh, orange pigment up the legs and on the cloak and stuff. Much like I did with the others, just to kind of keep them all within that theme. Um, but yeah, that's it. Uh, thanks, James, for hanging out. Thank you, everyone, for hanging out. Really cool of you all. Don't think I had any new followers or anything. I will be putting this over on YouTube. So look, this is the YouTube bit. If you're watching this on YouTube, give us a like and subscribe. But come over to Twitch, because there's where I, I want to see. Um, and we do this live throughout the week. Mondays we do Retro Monday, we play a bunch of old retro games and the rest of the week we do painting. And if you're over here on Twitch right now, thanks as always for hanging out. Cool. Right, um, I shall see you all soon. Thanks very much. Have a great Thursday tomorrow, right? Yeah, Thursday. Uh, if I don't, hopefully I'll see you during the week anyway. If not, have a great weekend. But yeah, catch you later all. Bye-bye.